In any case, if you use controllers, you're going to use a mode that we call split Mac. That mode allows you to split the 802.11 Mac function between the access point on one side and the controller on the other side, where basically you're going to let the access point do whatever is real time for 802.11, such as encryption, role detection, and some other functions. And then whatever needs to be centralized or requires more intelligence is going to be taken out of the access point and brought to that central point that the controller is going to be. This is where we're going to do global view for channel control, power control. This is also where you'll do client authentication, policy validation, QoS validation, etc. This split Mac is very interesting because it frees the access points from things that will be taking too much resources from the AP and allows the AP to focus on what has to be real time. And at the same time, it gives you a central point from where you can view and control all the access points, but also all the clients in your network. So that's a very powerful split. This means, of course, that you will have two types of traffic between your clients and the controller and between the controller and the access point. You will have some control traffic, that is the control plane that you see in orange here, where the controller is going to tell the AP, change your channel, you have a new SSID now, change your power, etc. What is your status? What do you hear? Etc. That's the control plane. But then also the client traffic is going to get to the access point, is going to be encrypted maybe, or maybe not, but in all cases it's going to be encapsulated by the access point into another protocol, and then it's going to be sent the way it is to the controller. And then the controller is going to release its traffic into the wired network. So you have that difference between control plane traffic between the AP and the controller and data plane traffic between the AP and the controller. The exception, of course, is the flex connect mode where you decide for some of the SSIDs maybe that the data plane has to be local. So the data plane is going to stop at the access point level on the switch somewhere, of course, at the branch level. But there will still be, in most cases, some control plane going to the controller. And again, we say that the game plan was that the AP could survive the loss of that control plane as well temporarily. This is a choice, right? Because you may have some access points in flex connect mode where some of the traffic, some SSIDs will be locally switched where some other traffic from some other SSIDs will still be sent to the controller. But the flex connect mode gives you that choice. So the control plane and the data plane exchange between the AP and the controller is going to need a protocol. And that's what the CAPWAP protocol we're mentioning about is. CAPWAP is an ITF protocol, open protocol available to everybody that is called control and provisioning of access points. It relies on an older protocol that was Cisco proprietary that was called LWAP, Lightweight Access Point Protocol. So it was rewritten and published publicly with some other companies under the name CAPWAP. And it has two components, the control plane and the data plane. What you need to remember is that the controller is going to distinguish one from the other because they are not going to use the same port. Control plane is going to use UDP 5246. And that's going to create a secure connection between the AP and the controller through which ex information about power, etc., is going to be exchanged. This is DTLS encrypted, which means that no one on the path is going to be able to see what the controller is telling the AP and vice versa. No hijacking of that communication. And then there is CAPWAP data, which is using 5247, still UDP. And depending on what mechanism you're using, that traffic can just be sent in the clear or can also be encrypted in some cases. By default, it's not encrypted because it's between the AP and the controller. It's in your LAN. It's in a place where you trust the switchers. So traffic does not need to be encrypted. But if that traffic needs to cross for some reason, some place that is unsafe, you can decide to also encrypt data traffic. But you see, you have to remember these two ports. These are going to be different for data and for control.